is not now known as a country that doesn't honor international law, human rights, or religious freedom. And American tourists are, are going to pay for that. It's the famous sabotage from within, as the Roman philosopher and statesman uh, you know, Cicero said. A murderer is less to be feared. They already warned us about it. As President Mubarak said, there is never, he has never seen such anti-American feeling being as strong as it is today throughout the world. So if you wanted enemies, you've got them now. Because Al-Qaeda is a fiction created by what you jokingly call neocons. Neocons are just a catchphrase used by the other side. It really doesn't have much meaning at all. A neocon is a skull and bones man, is, is what a neocon is. A neocon is a Straussian, a follower of the philosophy of Leo Strauss and other demagogues like that who prefer not to come in front of the camera. A neocon is a Russell Trust agent and a Freemason. And they are themselves lieutenants for other powers. And their job was to create enemies of America. They are enemies already on domestic soil. And now their job was to create foreign enemies with the idea that this country is beset by enemies and is thought of wrongly and is considered wrongly. Well, why not? The proof is there, isn't it? I've said in my other works, and Anthony and Jordan have gone into this, that these individuals are obviously related to the dynasties of old. Father George and his wife Barbara are both descendants of Godfroy de Bouillon, who in 1099 was leading European noblemen in a successful crusade to recapture Jerusalem from the Islamic faith and moved into the king's palace there at Temple Mount. And Godfroy was the first king of Jerusalem and the Duke of Lower Lorraine, a major region of the Illuminati bloodline. Bush is closely related to every European monarch on and off the throne and has kinship with every member of Britain's royal family, the House of Windsor. But the Windsor is again a catchphrase. Windsor had to be created because they all have such thick German accents that the British people were going to wonder who is this that's just moved in here the Buckingham Bloody Palace. No, it's Saxe Coburg Gotha. Right? It's, it's the Guelph dynasty. It's the Habsburgs and the Hanoverans that is, the, is behind the Windsors. And when the red phone rings, Bush jumps. He's related to her daughter, Queen Elizabeth. So, want to know who's behind Bush? There it is. And he is 13th cousin once removed from the heir of the throne, Prince Charles. These are oligarchs. These are aristocrats. And of course, because of the wars and, and the, the rise of rebellion, they can't operate openly anymore from the throne as, and hang people in the streets like they used to do in my country, where the nobleman, the lord, would literally stand on his balcony and watch the rebels be hung, drawn, and quartered. They know if they try that, they'll be overthrown. So they change tactics just a little bit and put people that are officially not known to be related to them in power. And, and they achieve what they want in that way. Now, Bush's family tree can be documented as far back as the 15th century. He's connected to Edward I of Longshanks, that all the Scots know as the Hammer of the Scots, who decimated and murdered up there. It's business as usual for these people. And the Bullions were servants, though, of Pope Gregory VII, particularly uh, Godfrey. He didn't just dream up this idea of his own. He was sent. He was an agent, as the, his descendants today are agents. He was sent by the Pope Gregory VII and Urban II. And his wife, that's the senior Bush, of course, him and his wife are both related to the same British monarchs. And Clinton and Dold and Gore, the rest is the same. I go into that in my other works. We have the phenomenon of the White Pope. But the White Pope is just the head of the official organ, the official uh, Roman Catholic religion. Behind him is the Black Pope. And behind the Black Pope, for those who are familiar specifically with my work, is the Cult of Aton. And these hierarchs are of the ancient Egyptian world, the old Israelite Egyptian pharaohs of old. A whole other concept that we don't have time to elaborate on now. But those who are familiar with my work will understand that there's a worship of the dark side of the sun, which Christians call Luciferianism. And they're not far wrong, actually. They're not far wrong. But I prefer to call it Atonism, the worship of the sun church that Jordan has spent his whole life elaborating on. The solar church. What is the solar church? These people that we're talking about today are lower henchmen, servants, lieutenants of this great power. But specifically, Bush answers to the Queen and also to the Black Pope, who at this point in time is Peter Hans Kolvenbach and his coterie, Opus Dei, and many of the other orgs that they control in this country, including the media. As David Icke has said, the Queen of England made Bush's military chiefs, Colin Powell and, and Norman Schwarzkopf, honorary knights of the British Empire. And the senior Bush is uh, indicted for services rendered also in the first war of Iraq. Of course, but for any American to get on his knees 
to those people in, in Buckingham Palace is an obscenity. That alone should have had them thrown into the Atlantic Ocean where they belong. <laughs> How dare they, that hundred, a few hundred years ago, you were fighting these people. They were all at war against these tyrants. The Tsar of Russia wasn't your enemy. The Arda Mongolians weren't. Certainly not the Af Afghanistans and Saddam Hussein, no. The enemy of America, as I've said many times, was Britain. So what, is the, what are they doing giving the keys of the city of New York to the Queen of England just a short time after? What are these guys doing, getting on their knees? Well, they're, they're doing it because they have to. They're going home to say, pat me on the back, now I've done my job. America is sinking a little bit further into the, into the grave. Where's my medal? My medal, my medal, my medal.